I'm Brian Amkrat, the Executive Director of the Laura and Alvin Siegel Lifelong Learning Program at Case Western Reserve University. It is my pleasure to welcome you here uh, to what is uh, I'm thinking now over 10 years of bringing Israeli authors to our community here in Cleveland. So before I introduce our speaker for tonight, uh, I, and I don't think we build the program this way, but I do want to recognize uh, memory of Neely Sharon Adler, who had the idea uh, that we could you know, bring prominent Israeli writers here to Cleveland and that people would come and want to listen to them. Uh, so uh, I'm pleased that we're able to continue to do that. I also want to thank the Herbert and Mariana Luxemburg Lecture Fund. I think our full title of that fund is the Herbert and Mariana Lecture, Lecture Fund uh, of the uh, Siegel College Lecture Fund of the Jewish Federation of Cleveland. So I want to give proper attribution. Uh, I thank them for their support. Uh, and I do want to remind everyone that tomorrow, uh, Dorit will be speaking again first at 8 o'clock in the morning for an informal Hebrew conversation. Uh, and then at 10 o'clock, uh, considering love and marriage, looking back on Persian brides. Uh, so. Uh, if you enjoy tonight, uh, please join us. If you don't enjoy tonight, you can give it another try tomorrow. So entirely up to you. Uh, and without further ado, uh, it is my pleasure to welcome to Cleveland, first time in Cleveland, uh, Dorit Rabinyan, uh, who was born in Israel to Iranian Jewish parents. Uh, at only 21, she wrote her first novel, Persian Brides, which went on to become an award-winning international bestseller, translated into 10 languages, and established her as a voice of a new generation in Israel. Her second novel, Strand of a Thousand Pearls, was also an international bestseller, published in 2003. And her third novel, All the Rivers, published in 2014, was named one of the 10 best books of the year by Haaretz newspaper, and was awarded the prestigious Bernstein Award for Literature. The book, which tells a love story between an Israeli woman and a Palestinian man, became the center of controversy, some of you may have read about this, when Israel's Ministry of Education excluded it from the high school literature curriculum. This decision led to protests from teachers and administrators, creating a surge in book sales and media attention in the aftermath, so I guess no such thing as bad publicity. Uh, please welcome Dorit Rabinyan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the welcome. Um, yes, shall we start with the uh, scandal, or should we start with the, with the, with literature? I, I <laughs> there's a there's a beautiful saying by uh, Federico Fellini, the Italian director, who said that uh, every censorship. It's an ad campaign sponsored by the government. <laughs> so mine was uh, really um, <sighs> it was quite quite a voyage. Um, when I when I had this recall published uh, by the Time magazine when the book came out in in America, I had uh, told about this one minute. One moment that I, uh, at late evening of the very, the th it was December 30th, no, thir thir 30th, yeah, of uh, one day before the last day of 2015, that I, I, I came to know that the pedagogical committee of the Ministry of Education had found my book according to the arguments that were stated by their report saying that my book, and here's the quote, is dangerous to the Jewish identity of the young readers because it might encourage assimilation, end of quote. Uh, I, I, I came to know about it at around 8 o'clock that night, and I got a call from uh, the, the early morning show of uh, the second channel. So I went to, to bed early, knowing that tomorrow morning I'm going to this morning show. That was it. And then early morning I woke up, I got picked by a taxi, sent a straight to the uh, makeup room, out, I was hooked to the microphone, and 
pushed into the studio. And as I was sitting at the chair next to the two hosts uh, on the table, every morning show everywhere around the world has coffee cups and uh, mo uh, mo morning papers. So as I was sitting there, there was the, the minute I had this bang in my mind, because I saw the five major Israeli newspapers, and my face was on their headline. <laughs> so, so that was the very ending day of 2015 for me. And that was the moment I realized that I became to be a center of this major political scandal that had somehow formed my work of art, my story being composed for six years of writing, doing my best to polish it and to come up with the best result I can give as an author. That day, this work, after 18 months of being very well accepted by the Israeli readership, it got very well sold, it got awarded, it got reviewed, everything was just fine. I was on the verge of starting something new, something, a new book to be written. That day had made this uh, book to be somehow a political statement, a political symbol, uh, um, a symbol for the threat of the freedom of thought, the freedom of speech, the freedom of expression in nowadays Israeli democracy. Um, at the beginning, I was refusing to let go of the artistic gravity of what I have done. But then came the whole it was it was it was not a parade it was like a, a march of progressive israeli audience that was following this book and 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 protesting with it so that day you would see all the facebook twitter instagram feeds being uh, 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 swept with israelis who went to bookshops buy not only one copy but as many copies as teenagers they have as, at home. And they were saying, this is for my eldest, this is for, the, for this one, this is for that one. I'll make sure that all the teenagers I know will be reading this novel <laughs> against the Minister of Education. And the Minister of Education, the right-wing, religious, ruthless politician, couldn't bear this criticism. So at 8 o'clock that night, remember me at 8 a.m. at 8 p.m. he went to the major um, uh, news studio and there it was the opening uh, interview and he had said that uh, it's not only those arguments that were stated in the report by the pedagogical committee it's above this above the fact that this book encourages assimilation it is dangerous to the Jewish identity of all the youngsters in Israel who might be reading it. And this is why it was banned from Israeli high schools and it shouldn't be taught in, in classrooms. I am the enemy of the nation because this book is a non-patriot work. It is, uh, um, and I, now I'm going to quote his quotes that are absolutely false. That is, I remind you, the last day of 2015, it's a time that fake news was not a known common notion. And I would be sitting watching this powerful man, powerful uh, person that my tax payments are, are sponsoring, saying that I, in my novel, compare the Israeli soldiers to sadist uh, uh, war criminals, that I compare the, the IDF to the Hamas movement, that I, uh, I mean, a list of all those false uh, attacks that uh, him, <laughs> looking back, I, I, I learned 
uh, that all this stream of criticism that was poured above his head uh, had made him go to be consulted with a political advisor who had uh, suggested that he would personally attack him, attack me. And uh, the, the result coming out of this uh, not only censorship, not only be of this ban, is me, um, uh, uh, um, his, his electorate got signaled in the news edition that I am uh, a persona non grante. And I, I had his people, uh, the bullies among them, to wait outside my door. And I had people attack me in the street, and I got spit on the street. It was, it was a very difficult time. Uh, I, I got to really understand the meaning of terror. You don't need more than two bullies standing outside the door and saying, are you Dorit Rabinian? And I would say, who are you? And they would say, we are from uh, Lehava organization. If you know of Lehava organization, it's a very violent group attacking uh, mixed couples in the streets of Jerusalem. So just by the fact that they came once and I started crying and had all the neighbors coming out and then they left, I, it was three months of me not being able to uh, relax because they could have come any other day. And even if they didn't, their silhouette was printed on the, on the, on the wall. It was enough for me to be terrorized. Um, but this, this, this was, uh, could, I couldn't bear this time of attack unless so many Israelis were supporti supporting me, unless so many Israelis were, um, and above them all were my, my teachers, the Israeli authors, uh, Yoshua, Meir Shalev, Amos Oz, David Grossman, Sami Michel. They were all like bodyguards around me. And they were, I remember uh, A.B. Oshua, who is the most uh, perhaps emotional among them. He was calling me like five times a day saying, Dorit, you're not alone. Today it's your book, tomorrow it's mine. Don't you worry. And they had shifts of them giving interviews of, of uh, Apo apologizing my work and writing articles, and they were very, very, very much supportive. And unless all these uh, powers that were coming to stand by me, I couldn't uh, face those powers that, as you probably know, are included in what Israel is becoming to be. Uh, our democracy is shaking. Uh, we know of those around Israel who are trying to change or attack our structure of life from outside. Now we have these powers from within trying to redesign our ways of life, our liberties, the most obvious spirits that what you recognize Israel, Israel to be are now uh, are in their aim to uh, mold differently according to what they see Israel should be. And these two tribes, one it sees the democratic element of the Jewish democratic state to be superior, and the other see the Jewish element of the Jewish democratic state to be above the other. So this is the whole contradiction. Um, liberal, uh, liberal ways are not as um, as not as respected as uh, they used to be. And the more uh, time goes by, uh, and the more this uh, man in power, uh, Netanyahu, sees his. Uh, uh, career uh, to be ongoing eternally, not questioning his uh, <laughs> his time in in the administration. After it's it's been more than a decade, you'd see a generation of Israelis that know nothing except this prime minister. They don't know any other choice, any other option of Israel being ran by somebody else, perhaps somebody 
with uh, different interests. And uh, this is, um, I, am, uh, I, I am usually on Saturday nights, you would find me uh, among uh, a group of Israelis who are de demonstrating uh, against the ongoing um, uh, process of uh, sending him to be judged for his uh, um, cases. He has cases uh, on the table, and uh, it's been too long, and it feels like somebody is uh, dragging his legs doing his job. So uh, I would be less elegant, and I will be holding a, a megaphone, and I'll be screaming out loud uh, for let justice uh, in and be uh, respected. So let me suggest one thing. To be uh, uh, genuine, authentic, let's, I suggest we'll go the Israeli way. Because in Israel, we don't have uh, Q and A's. We have A's and Q's. <laughs> If you know, if you know uh, 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 the Israeli spirit, so don't be shy and don't be hesitative. Just raise your hand and lead me towards what you're uh, hoping or expecting or wishing to discuss. Please do. But may may you have r your voice rise up, please. Supposed to be a political presentation or a literary presentation? Oh. Like Portuguese, they ask, I think, or simple thing. Okay. So let me let me let me uh, excuse excuse this. Uh, I will repeat the question. Is it a political one? Are we are we gonna discuss politics tonight, or is it about uh, Israeliness? Ah, huh? right. Uh, I I must. Uh, dismiss myself of the two, because I'm an author, I'm a writer, I'm a novelist. So my business is writing, is storytelling. And I'm not a politician, and I'm uh, not an anthropologist or a so social uh, uh, science uh, person. So I, I, can, I can tell you about my work, and as I said, Israel is changing its face nowadays. So being telling you about my political, my, my experience with the political scandal that my work has gone through, I suggest an aspect of what Israel is like nowadays. Please. Thank you so much. <laughs> I just want to continue his idea, OK? Um, a lot of the people here never visit Israel. Oh. So we, we please, can you say something positive about Israel? Oh, I can say lots of positive things about Israel. It's my, it's my only place. It's the, I lived for a year, more than a, ye a year in Berlin, more than a year in New York. I've tried uh, six months in Italy almost a year in London, and I had experienced what it is to be outside of my habitat, of my uh, emotional uh, landscape. Uh, but um, I wrote All the Rivers, this is my recent novel, in order to portray my uh, Israeli portrait, self-portrait. I used the distance of describing Israel from this telescopic perspective, looking it, at it from New York to Tel Aviv, uh, to say something about intimacy, to say something about how I cherish and how, how I cannot replace Israel for no other uh, location to live and to maintain uh, life as I uh, recognize myself living. So um, I can say lots of positive things. It's a, it's a very thriving society. We're a young society, yet we're facing uh, some uh, adolescence uh, age of becoming of age as a culture. 
and we live in a very difficult neighborhood. It's not an easy question, the question of survival, and be, we're being haunted by historical traumas, and we're carrying into our independency, into our most modern life, we carry the terminology of 2,000 years of diasporic minority. This is why this claim that my book encourages assimilation was found to be outrageous according to so many Israelis, because assimilation has to do with being a minority that is the, in danger of being subsumed by majority. And us being the landlords, us being the sovereign co power in our country, had we were hoping and believing that it had dismissed us from this fear of being devoured, of being taken, of being changed beyond recognition by the surrounding environment, by the surrounding culture, by those religions and those uh, uh, all over the world, Jews were living encapsulating and preserved their identity by keeping isolated, by those all these rituals of uh, of isolating one thing from another. Why don't we have meat and dairy at the same uh, 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 dinner, lunch? It's because of it, this method of isolating one thing from another, uh, what is sacred and what is secular, what is uh, midweek and what is uh, Shabbat. We have all these rituals according to the halakha, a donkey and an ox cannot work at the same field. According to the halakha, we shouldn't be wearing clothes that has both silk and cotton in it. Why is all these rituals for? It's for repeating to the next generations that they shouldn't get involved with others. They shouldn't be mixed, right? But when we are 80% of Jews in our own homeland, back in our place. Assimilation is no longer a currency. And there come this religious uh, group that are relieving this ancient fear and mixing it with a current, very uh, uh, relatable fears that us Jews have in this Arabic neighborhood that we're uh, based in. Am I clear about it, about this diasporic DNA that Zionism has not let go after 70 years of sovereignty? We are uh, somehow leaving, uh, 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 our, our identity is much, much more secure that en than any Jewish community living among others, other religions, other, other cultures, because we are in charge. Assimilation is no longer uh, something that we should be, uh, I, mean, I mean, anxious about, as it was presented in the arguments by the pedagogical committee. And I must add that my book was three times recommended by the artistic committee. The literary committee that had read the book had found this book relevant, uh, good enough written, uh, 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 important, even important was mentioned in the re by the report of the artistic committee because they found the, the portrayal of Israel that I suggest and the relationship of the Israeli woman with the uh, Palestinian men taking place in New York to be eye-opening, including acknowledgement of the other, seeing equality as an option and and to be honest, I can rephrase what they were saying, that this book is dangerous to the Jewish identity of the kids. It's not. It's the human character of the Palestinian character that I uh, draw with the same pencil of respect and, and lovable powers that I infuse in his character as much as her character. That was found dangerous according to the right-wing government because it's actually subversive to what they've been doing for most, more than a decade, describing the other, the neighbor, as either demon or ignorant or, the, or, or, or doesn't even exist, trying to convince young Israelis that they are 
isolated and on their own in the region. That we are, we can, uh, we can live our most prosperous lives without without taking under consideration that if there is smoke coming out of the window of our neighbor, our lives are not secure as we wish to think they are. Right? You cannot be liberated to live the Israeli lives if you don't acknowledge that this is a dependent on destiny, that we sail at the same boat because we are so approximate, because of this intimacy, because of it, this, it's, its dependency that we must take uh, an account of what is going on in the backyard of our consciousness, the one that we keep on suppressing, the knowing that they are next to us, that they are so near, that they are so deprived, that our liberties, that our freedom is, is not as equal as to them, that we are being seen. If there's anybody here in the room that had read the book, there's a, there's a, there's a, a major chapter where my Israeli character is sitting on the sofa in downtown Manhattan and is watching a home video that her boyfriend got from Ramallah. His family was picturing everyone and saying hello and showing all the home dishes and we miss you, we miss you. And then his brother is taking the, the camera, the video camera, to the porch. And for him, taking a, 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 a long shot of the, of the view seen from the window. And the Israeli girl, for the very first time, sees Israel as it's being seen from the ninth floor of a building in, in Ramallah, in the West Bank. And for the very first time, she acknowledges that our Israeli life is being seen. We are, we, many Israelis don't know that, that Palestinians from a, a, a perhaps a, 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 from a mount, not, not even a hill, a, a, in, a, in a top of a hill, you can see the Israeli seashore, all the buildings, all the cities, the airports, it's all being seen, we're being observed. We cannot live our lives in this oblivion thinking that we are on our own. And that was found to be dangerous to the Israeli young uh, readers. Wow, that was, uh, thank you for that very powerful insight. Thank you. Um, I'm going to switch the topic. I'm sorry, yeah, it's still on, just hold it close to you. Oh, okay. Switch, switch it. Switch it, okay. Switch it. Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna go right to the end of the book. So. Did the Arab Are protagonist? You spoil? <laughs> 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 mm. let's, let's, let's try. Let's but this try. is this is the only chance I'm going to have to listen, ask you listen, this question. I, I, I suggest you ask your question coded mm, okay. in, a, in a sense that I can get it, and whoever uh, reached the end of it would understand. But uh, yeah. whoever didn't. Uh, will find it uh, to be somehow mysterious and perhaps <laughs> right. intriguing. Okay. This is really going to be interesting. Okay. <laughs> I give you the On challenge. On my feet. All right. Um, okay. Um, well, maybe I should whisper it so. <laughs> so, the Arab pro protagonist at the end of the book does what happened to him. Was that. Was that self-inflicted or was that an accident? Yes. Yes. Let me, let me uh, <laughs> take it from here. <laughs> As I said, uh, uh, this novel is a chance to observe Israel from exile is to say something about my homeland and sense of belonging, as if it's a melancholic yet hopeful love letter I write home. Um, and it's about young Middle Eastern 
uh, consciousness, both Palestinian and Israeli. And it deals a lot with three elements of this uh, emotional landscape that we're surrounded with. It's the earth, it's the sun, and it's the sea. And the earth is quite obvious because it's political. It's the terra. It's the terror. It's the, the the territory. And the sun. It's been uh, used in the novel as if this is the true homeland that we're missing because experience the North American cold. This winter of yours <laughs> is for so many Mediterranean Mediterraneans is found to be horrific. Because in this frost, we lack this motherhood of ours, this sun that gives us so much definition, our contour of the bodies, the outline of what we recognize our bodies to be is defined by this warmth. And I use the sun and I use the warmth as perhaps uh, a uh, a projection of of, uh, of 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 being homesick, and there is the sea, there is this horizon, there is this fourth wall. This Israelis recognize as their <gasps> window to the world, because we we are uh, we are some sort of an island, right? We have no access or free access or secure access or a, an agreed on borderline with our neighbors north, east, and south. So the west wall, the actual western wall of the Israeli life is, is the horizon, is the sea. And we consider it to be our own. As, but as I said, the Palestinians in our subconscious, those in the backyard in the West Bank, they can see it. They can even smell it, they can even smell the sea breeze. It cannot be denied as much as Israelis wishes to be, wish it to be. And uh, it's, the sea is part of the Palestinian ethos in a sense that it captures the Palestinian past before 1948. For them, when they say the sea, they say the lost freedom the lost sovereignty, the lost managing life on our own. For them, it's the, 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 the milk that they, they, they're being fed from their mother's breasts. It's, it's so uh, fundamental, it's so profound as a symbol. And this is something that I've learned to acknowledge only when I was in Brooklyn, only when I met this very exciting, uh, intelligent, uh, young group of uh, Palestinian intellectuals and artists, and I, I, I never known, I, I've never known that. I never known of how much the sea is significant for them, and I just, I just knew that many Palestinians don't know how to swim, and it was, it was. Uh, I, I found it to be not only tragic that so of them lose their life dipping for the very first time in this treasure of nature once they, once in their lifetime, twice in their lifetime, perhaps four or five times they get to be as near as, as, as swimming in the sea and then they don't know how to, how to enjoy it and they, they drown. And all this was was uh, was was in theory, and then this book was written not because of all my knowledge and all my homesickness, and not even before because of the friendships that I uh, maintain with th this group of uh, scholars and artists. It's it's a particular one that I became close with. His name was Hassan Houani. He was born in Hebron, raised in Ramallah, a Palestinian young artist who was brilliant, charismatic, very, very promising, on the verge of making his breakthrough in the art scene of New York. And seven months after I came to know him, he had, uh, um, I returned, by then, it was the summer of 2003, I returned to Tel Aviv, I had, 
uh, my share of New York. I came back, uh, and he came for uh, for visiting his family only for a short while, and he came to visit me. And we had scheduled to meet uh, at the beach, at the same beach I was telling him the whole winter about, this, uh, this particular beach that has no uh, wave break. And I, I, by the time I got there to meet him, he was no longer alive. So this book is dedicated to him. This book addresses him. This book was written to keep him living, to keep him talking, to keep him being, to have the more people as possible to fall in love with him as much as I did. And this act of uh, saving him, of reaching out to pull him out of the waters had given me uh, a, a, a sense of rescue, because I felt like it was, uh, it could have been, I, I have, I, I, I felt his presence in the room while I was writing it. Hassan was uh, very, his presence was uh, undeniable. <laughs> So it, in the course of these six years of writing the novel, I felt him uh, sometimes co-writing the book with me. Uh, he had his comments. <laughs> Hilmi is described, the, the, the Palestinian character is described very emotional and very, um, very uh, 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 a person of uh, bursts of, uh, in infatuation of the world and sometimes bursting into tears and he was saying, oh, come on, you're making me too feminine. I'm an Arab man. I have my pride to keep. <laughs> so I had him in my ears. And sometimes I think the whole destiny of this special destiny, this unique uh, quest that this book is going through has to do with him uh, some, you know, p pulling some strings. Obviously, the controversy over all the rivers has shaped you and changed you over time. You didn't expect this to occur, and yet it did. So what will your next novel be? <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, my uh, next uh, project, I must say that I was uh, due to this scandal and due to this shaping me uh, experience, I spent two and a half years in airports and in, in hotel rooms promoting the 30, uh, more than 30 translations of the book into various languages and meeting my readerships uh, from, I mean, around the world uh, and, and particularly uh, meeting those, uh, this Palestinian diaspora who were reading the book and was, it was very meaningful to me to get their uh, reassurance that my uh, creating the, 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 the character that was uh, inspired by Hassan Hilmi is, uh, is um, believable, is convincing. And I was uh, given the, the, the reassurance that he is uh, an authentic young Palestinian man. So it's, it was um, a major thing to me. Uh, so after spending so much time on the road, <laughs> I gave it, uh, I, I paused it, and I started uh, something new. And nowadays I'm writing, um, um, how do you say, uh, teens novel? Young adults, yes, YA. Yeah, this is what my agent says. <laughs> it's good that you're writing a YA. I did it uh, because I think uh, young adults should be reached out and helped to uh, be able to uh, to be to be given the joy of reading and to give them a chance to uh, practice what only literature can provide, which is identification uh, that is not as we know it coming via the screen, because the screen suggests. Uh, an identification that keeps us very tense when we identify with a hero or the heroine, yet we never get to experience what literature uh, has. This uh, virtue of reading a story 
and actually deeping in somebody else's identity, tasting his voice, tasting her emotions, being experienced with being somebody else, having somebody else's thoughts. It's something that is, we're not uh, capable of doing when we are into a story that is being uh, consumed via the screen. If it's a TV series or a movie, we are very much into it, but we don't practice empathy. This great human gesture of knowing the other from within is something that if humanity loses, I think it's going to get uh, uh, to be to be losing something that is so fundamental for 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 us being capable of crossing the outline of our identity. To be able to deep into somebody else's being is something that we practice while we read a book. We, we, there is no inner world for, for, for a film character. There is no experience of what it is to be somebody else. It's only a book that, that we can practice this uh, uh, ability. When we read Raskolnikov in The Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, we spend hours, days, and, and great effort and, and great uh, will to understand what is a murder uh, mind, how it ticks, and we experience being him. If you read Lolita by uh, Nabokov, we know how a mind of a child molester moves. It's, it's a big thing that we can do. And it's really, really important that we, should, we could have nowadays literature uh, uh, given to, to young adults to read. And, I, and, I, and there are not enough of these uh, in Hebrew that I can say uh, that are uh, fine literature. I loved your book, and what I thought you did perfectly was capture Liat's struggle with dating and being involved with a Palestinian, and also at the same time, his struggle dating somebody who was Israeli. While they were in New York, specifically that subway scene, when he's embarrassed to introduce her to his Palestinian friends. So I was wondering how you, did you strike a balance? Were you like keeping score about how <laughs> they were feeling. I'm not sure if because it read almost like that. They were equally struggling with dating somebody from the enemy. And I was wondering if you had to strike the balance in a certain way or just was a natural no, development. No, I, I, I found it to be unsymmetrical. Because him being a man, him being an artist, him being Muslim, gives, her, gives him much more uh, flexibility than her being a woman, her being Jewish, uh, you know what? Her being Jewish first, and then a female, and then a scholar, and not someone who is more easygoing with his ways. Uh, her, uh, us, we, ha we have a religion that is exclusive. And being, be, becoming a, new, a newcomer in the Islam is very easy, easy. We have a much more of a tribe instinct uh, protecting the the boundaries of our identity, and they are not so much. They are very much welcoming, and there 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 um, there are many of them. <laughs> we we have the experience of being a, um, a persecuted uh, minority, and uh, we had to, and we were taught to uh, to isolate and not to get mixed. So I, I had her to be much more, more conflictual about this involvement. Um, just before I came, I have good news. We signed a, a film rights uh, deal with Hollywood. Thank you. And I'm, I'm now thinking of uh, many scenes that I need to adapt into a visual storyline and how do I, bless you, how do I uh, shift from her inner struggle to uh, having it uh, conversed mm -hmm. on, on screen. Uh, and that, uh, that scene in the subway, uh, 
Did I mention that Gal Gadot is going to play Liat? Yes. <laughs> Yes, this is the really good news. <laughs> and, 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 and she's not a Mizrahi as I am. And the, 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 the element of Liat being from a, a Jewish a Mizrahi family, from Iranian family, it's a major thing because I think it's a linkage between the Israeli uh, certain kind of identity not all Israel, it's a kind of, of Israeliness that relates in this twilight zone of, of identities with the Arabness, with the neighborhood. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking how can I uh, rephrase those scenes that will man, match uh, a Gal's appearance which is very, very lovely, but it's also, <laughs> it's also not as dark as I am and not as dark as I depict Kliat to be. Sorry? Are you responded to the book? Oh, I'm, I, I was asked if I'm the only screenwriter, and I, uh, you sound like the producer now, <laughs> who was saying, uh, uh, give us your thoughts, and we have it, uh, in, I mean, I'm going to be uh, a, a leading consultant to the script writing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, there's nobody who knows the book, the book as I do, and I'm experienced with uh, TV, TV, TV uh, script writing, and I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the craft. It's just that I love my language too much to let it go and move to films and TV. <laughs> what, what type of feedback have you gotten from young adults? For, for all the rivers. Oh, you know, there's, a, there's an element that really breaks my heart because they are rebellious teacher who against this um, command from the Ministry of Education who do bring all the rivers to classroom and try to, to, teach, us, to teach it uh, against all odds. And the response from uh, this generation, these millennials who had known nothing except for right-wing government, who are swept with uh, uh, religion, uh, how did you put it today when I said Adata? The, the process of Israel becoming more religious, more... Uh, more uh, nationalistic, more clamped, fortified with its own justice, with its own rationality, that we have our, you know, why we are like this, and not being, uh, being Israel being held by somebody that had uh, radicalized empathy. This is what Netanyahu's project was to make empathy to be a radical act. Recently, he had attacked friends of mine who were creating for HBO this series about the summer of 2014 in Israel. Uh, uh, it's called The Boys, Our Boys. And he had uh, uh, published in his Facebook uh, page, do not watch this series. This series is a known patriot series, not because it's not, a, it's, it's, it's very much shows Israel to its best when it comes to, to pursuing justice and, and, uh, and putting uh, killers in jail and, and, and showing all the complexities that we do carry. But anyway, those kids, when they're being asked, to read all the rivers, many of them say, oh, it's a Arab-loving book. We don't want to read it. It was, uh, it was banned by the Ministry of Education. It's not a good book. I mean, it's, it, this, this is a, 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 um, a backlash that I cannot face. I, I don't know what to do with it. I, what can I tell them? Uh, this book cannot harm you. It can only suggest another view or per perhaps uh, refresh your views, but add a new perspective into it. I, I, I mean, it's too delicate. I cannot speak with lo slogans. I, my, my, uh, my hands are, uh, are, are, are into composing uh, a sentence for hours to make it musical. This is my craft. I cannot compete with uh, politicians. 
I did read it. I enjoyed it. Thank you. But, um, and I don't agree with the censorship of it. Uh, but I just want to make a statement because I don't want to, otherwise it will become a whole lecture here. You made a statement that just because we're the majority, the Jews are the majority, like you mentioned, an 80% figure, yes. that we don't have to worry about assimilation. And I take great umbrage at that statement. In Israel? In Israel, yeah. I mean, I'm not talking about Arabs. I'm talking about assimilation in general. It's because we have our... Uh, we've kept some of our traditions that we are still alive, and it could happen in Israel, totally and it can happen totally anywhere else. But and, other, and, but and, censorship. I mean, you're taking it from the point of view of the Arabs. I'm not ta uh, Muslims. I'm just thinking in general. Other other nations of the world. Anywhere, Israel is not exempt. If you go, become non-religious, or if you can marry a uh, Muslim. Uh, we're going to disappear. Let me. Let, I totally agree with you that this worry, this this worry is uh, is uh, actual to our certain communities. But let me just um, tell you about uh, a a, t, a a radio program that was actually approaching approaching the social security statistics in Israel, to the Institute of Statistics in Israel, to, to, to observing what are the quantities of mixed marriages or mixed couples in Israel who are being supported by the Social Security. Uh, give me a number a year. Sixteen. A year. Maybe those are the ones who are claiming. Those who are. Oh, social security. No, 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 no. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I, uh, being sponsored. I mean, uh, uh, no. Uh, I, I refer to households. I, these numbers are unbelievable. These, these are. Uh, what I want to say is that my character. No, 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 yes, Muslims, yes, okay, 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 but I want to say something. I, I totally agree with you that Israel uh, communities uh, during the course of generations had preserved its identity when there was no land, when we were stateless. We preserved it by this uh, uh, repeat to the next generations do not mix. This is how 2,000 years of diasporic Jewish life had been maintained. And once we came back to our homeland, you could see that this capsule was really efficient. It really did what it should have done, kept the Israel, the, the Jewish ways alive. Yet, It's 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 uh, it's. Yeah, I understand. That we're here in Ohio, in Cleveland, Ohio. I respect your saying. You know better than I do about the simulation in a broad sense of it. I I uh, I respect it. What is the current status of the book? Is it censored throughout the whole country or just in the no, schools? No, no, no. It could have been. Uh, world uh, 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 sales record breaking unless it was available on shops. So it, just the schools? Only schools. It's, it's only schools that it's not uh, uh, available to it's teach like it in high schools. Right. So it, it's not included in the list of books that are being uh, examined on in the 12th year of uh, high school. I just love the way you express yourself, but I, I wanted to ask. Um, is this book also translated into Arabic, and is there any audience for this amongst the Palestinian population, yes, not so, only in so Israel, the, the, but also worldwide? Yes, the, the, those Palestinians in, uh, in the diaspora, in the world, reading German, Italian, French, uh, I don't know, Turkish, Dutch, there are almost 30 languages had, uh, are writing me letters and really... Um, uh, strengthening my hands. They say it's a Jewish Zionist book, yet this book is uh, very much uh, creating 
uh, a persona of a believable and lovable and relatable Palestinian men, young men. Uh, my, my Arabic translation is the, in the verge of uh, being published uh, and distributed in the Arab wor world. And I don't know, uh, maybe perhaps it's going to be banned again. I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be a, a nice uh, um, reflection of the responses I'm going to get from the Arabic translation. It's going to be. Oh, I I don't know no other language than than Hebrew. My uh, I can speak in English. No, 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 no. I trust my translator. I trust him, and I have I have enough people uh, observing his work. In every 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 language is being observed by lectors. It's. Uh, what should I tell you tomorrow? <laughs> Three. Um, first of all, I loved your book. I thought it was fantastic, and I also appreciate the fact that you're probably attacked by both sides every time you go, so kudos on, on standing firm. I wanted to ask you about the um, contrast between the regular and the uh, phenomenal, or between the normal and the extraordinary in your book. Um, this is a modern uh, Romeo and Juliet story, Israeli and Palestinian. It happens in New York. Um, it happens after September 11. There are a lot of things that are very unique about that story. But as a couple, um, those two, uh, those young couple is acting just like any other couple everywhere. They love, they make love, they argue, they drive each other crazy. They leave the dishes. And, and no, and I was wondering. a peaceful, harmonious kind of uh, postcard of uh, a relationship of a mixed uh, Israeli and Palestinian couple. It's, it's a very uh, disturbed uh, kind of uh, two identities who mirror each other and Absolutely. contradict each other. But I was wondering if this is actually the, uh, the real danger of the book, the, 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 the idea that an, a Palestinian and, and a Jewish person can create a real relationship, but not a fairy tale relationship. Maybe that was why they were so afraid of them in Israel, because if you can leave your dishes unclean when you're with a Palestinian, maybe there's a chance here for a real couplehood, rather than creating a sort of a fairy tale story about how she fell in love with his image as an Arab person and, and never saw him again. It's interesting. I, I was, I was uh, saying, I was using this term couplehood to my editor at Random House, and she was saying, that's a lovely word, but there's no such in English. We translate the zugiyut. Zug, it's a couple, so we translate it to be couplehood, but you guys, you, you, relationship, it's the, it's the, so you reminded me of her. Um, I think that if these two were to last, uh, longer and pen perhaps be experience more of a everyday life kind of uh, banality and be in argue who is going to take the car to the garage today and who's going to be responsible for uh, groceries and uh, dishes. Perhaps it, uh, it would be even uh, more hopeful. Perhaps uh, banality uh, would have uh, redeemed the story from its uh, aura of a fairy tale. It would be more concrete kind of coexistence, right? Um, I want to make sure yeah. that everyone knows to please let Dorit get outside. I know many people came with their books to get them signed. So I want to make sure I have one more question and then please remain seated until we can get her to where she needs to be you know to sign people. books. I do know my people. <laughs> one more question. Um, I wondered if you could talk about your evolution as a writer, um, as a woman writer, as a, it seems by when you first published as a, a child writer, <laughs> and sort of uh, how that, what if you could share some of your s earlier story, um, and perhaps any thoughts you have on sort of women and. Jewish women, women writing and supporting that world. Perhaps it's a, it's a huge subject. Uh, I, I, 
I can only preview for tomorrow, okay? <laughs> I can only say that uh, being a, a wonder kid of Israeli literature published at the age of 22, nowadays I can look back at being 22 and say, wow, that was a phenomenon. I didn't know it back then. I, uh, I uh, had um, somehow tunnel, channel uh, my grandma's memories and mixed it with my imagination and created uh, the fiction that I became to be known for, uh, Persian Brides and Strand of a Thousand Pearls. Uh, it brings not only uh, sweet memories. I mean, th th that time, uh, that success had uh, demanded or charged also a uh, uh, complex uh, relationship with the sense of success. So uh, I had to take a pause because it was too soon. I believe 22 is too soon. Um, and I, I had to uh, shape my voice for at this pause of my 30th. Uh, and then I, I, I published my third novel. I had, uh, I can tell you tomorrow, I had a, 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 another novel I wrote for six years and never published it. It was, it was not easy to be, to be, um, to be, to become uh, uh, known to others in my writing before I was known to myself. But, uh, but it's, all, it's also an adventure. <laughs> we authors, we know nothing of the wor world uh, except for sitting at our desk in our study and having no Wi-Fi, no phones, and for hours uh, deep in investigate ourselves about what it is to be human, what it is about life. Uh, so the more uh, perhaps obstacles we go, the better our writing become. So, for Israel, for loving of Israel, good night. Thank you for coming.